Hello, hello there. My name is Murray, and with my co-host Corey, and we are the Real Guys. How are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. We are findable at Instagram on the Real Show and on Twitter at the Real Show FM, and we're on also on Google, Apple, and Spotify podcasts. Anywhere you get your podcasts, we've also got a YouTube channel, the Real Show. You can like and subscribe and go there if you want to. We also put videos on there sometimes, just for you, just for you pesky YouTube viewers and radio listeners. So, hello and welcome to the Real Show. We are we are continuing our sort of sh- monthly Shrekathon, our Shrektastic Shrekathon. <laughs> yeah, you could say. That's a, yeah, that's a good name for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I finally coined that name on the last week. We the last it. one, yes. We should have called it that from the start, the Shrekathon. We should have done. We should. So have. this is our last instalment of the Shrekathon. Not for some, not for some time. It's a fun name to say that, isn't it? <laughs> what Shrekathon? Sh- Shrekathon, yeah. Uh, and we're doing Shrek 4 or Shrek Forever After. Mm. It's got quite a few titles. It does. I noticed this when searching it up. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to go into it and we're going to discuss characters, events, something a little trivia that we found funny, uh, some events we found funny. Um, and we'll just uh, go through it and let you know some of our future plans for the next coming months as well. Now, let's get into mm. Shrek 4. Now, did you watch this when it came out in 2010? No, this is my first time watching it. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I was, I was, I was thinking you'd say, "Oh, I watched it when it first came out," but no, but no, you didn't. And me too. This is my first time watching it the whole way through. So this is probably the freshest we're gonna be on. It is. I, I, I watched it last night as yes. of recording. Um, mm-hmm. you watched it what, the day before, I think. The day before, yeah. Yeah, and like, I ain't gonna lie. Going into this, I was not expecting much at all. Hmm. Like Shrek, well, I think Shrek Three got reviewed for worst out of the three for us. Yeah, I thought, it did. I thought, ah, this this might even be worse than Shrek Three. It's downhill from here. You thought? I, th- I thought that, but mm. you know what? Pleasantly surprised. Yeah, me too. Very much pleasantly surprised on how good this one is in comparison. Mm. It's it's chalked up to a couple of things. Yes. But first off, the animation. It's the best it's ever been with Shrek. And I know certain things are like hard to animate. Um, if you'd like a little, if you'd like a little, our first little uh, sprinkle of trivia, perhaps. Oh, a little tidbit. Yeah, a little uh, trivia sprinkle. I'm doing the, I'm doing the little sprinkle motion. You can't see it. <laughs> nice. um, but do you know that a uh, hair is notoriously difficult to uh, to animate and to recreate in CGI animation. Um, ah. Because if you notice in the first Shrek, uh, Fiona's hair is actually quite stiff. Doesn't move very much. Yeah, true. But this hair, but, th- but this hair in this film, she's got like long, sort of flowing locks. Uh, they're courtesy of the advances in not only computer animation, and also it's been nine years since uh, yes. <laughs> since Shrek 2001. And her hair, Fiona's hair, is actually modelled off Janis Joplin. Ah, oh, fair so, enough. Yeah, there's a little trivia sprinkle. Enjoy that little morsel, folks. So the the plot of this film is, yes. starts off with um, Shrek. Yeah, actually, no, it does start off with Shrek. It starts off with Shrek's storybook. It does. And it's uh, being read by a mysterious voice. Then we get... A uh, flashback into um, the Queen and the King of Far, Far Away. They're heading to uh, the sort of domicile, the home of uh, Rumpelstiltskin, who is the villain of this film. So, first off, I thought, like, oh, right. Uh, it was a tiny thought, but I thought they wouldn't have got the voices back for the King and Queen. That's why they didn't say anything in the first scene. <laughs> you know when you see them in the carriage? Yeah. And they don't say anything. I thought, oh, right, they're not going to speak because I couldn't get John Cleese back. But no, they, they did. So Yeah, they did. They did, and actually at the end, there's like frogs around his little picture. Did you just saw that in the? I did in 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 the credit sequence. In the credit sequence, yeah, there's little frogs around his picture, and I thought that was cute. But yeah, they get Julie Andrews, John Cleese comes back, um, and we get Rumpelstiltskin, who is uh, voiced by Walt Dawn, who many people know as the one of the main writers of SpongeBob SquarePants, mm. and also uh, did he work on sound or, or, or sound design, something like that, on these films? I think so. Yeah, so it's quite a unique story. It's quite a unique story, actually, because I think I, I know we talked a lot about Prince Charming and and the Fairy Godmother, but I think Rumpelstiltskin steals the show in this film. Is he right? We had this a couple of times. I mentioned this last week in Shrek the Third, but you mentioned your favourite villain was that actually Shrek Four. No, it's not, not actually Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin is good, but he's not my favourite Shrek villain. I'll mention him later. I I have a favorite, but I don't. Well, I know you're not a favorite. I I have a favorite in this film, but I don't think it's going to be the same one as yours. Oh right, sure. Um, <laughs> but Rumpelstiltskin was voiced by Walt Dawn, who actually did like um, uh, you know, when they some person will do a voice for a character before the actual actor will come in and do it. Yes. 
Like Walt Dawn did that for Rumpelstiltskin, uh, expecting some some you know highbrow celebrity to come in and fill over for it. Yeah. yeah. But th- when they were actually watching the film, the test like the the test reels of the film, they liked his voice so much they decided to keep it. I mean, it fit. It fit, it yeah. Fit. And it what it many people could have seen that as lazy. But mm. actually, I thought that was a great move because it, the voice matches the character much more than like the voice of, pff, I don't know, and um, I'm trying to think of a pop Orlando Bloom or whatever, yeah. you know, whoever they could have gotten to do the voice, whatever a list celebrity they could have got to do the voice. Walt Dawn's voice matches it much better because he sounds conniving, he sounds cunning, he sounds really like uh, he's got that sort of high pitched, wailly, screechy voice, and that's. And that just fits the character. It's the design, and it fits the motivation of the character as well. I mean, it was a. It's the, I I knew I knew nothing like, literally nothing about this film mm. when I watched it. Oh no, it's Trek has kids. Yeah, yeah. Because it's revealed in Trek for Trek Three. Mm. Did you know that? Did you know the memes? Uh, I knew I knew the do the roll, and that was it. Do the roll, do the roll. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> from this I film, we'd, we we had to, there's ba- we were bound to go into that at some point, which we? literally Get gets right. said cr- loads of times, like loads of times, because not only does it get said at the start when it's saying "dinner," and then it keeps repeating "dinner," and then the right at the end of the film, it comes right back to that point in the film. <laughs> what is the what is that? What is the age of that child? Can, I've seriously got some questions about that child. I know he's not my I favorite Shrek, woman, but he might as well be. I don't he's, know. He, that that man looks like his. That man is not that the father of that child. <laughs> that child looks like he's about seventy years old, or like a middle-aged man in like a in a child's bonnet. It's d- d- yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. So I I I literally that's all I knew. I was like, okay, right. And then literally, I was like, okay, what is this gonna be? Some weird thing of like Shrek now to figure out what to do with kids or something. But nope, he's literally you don't really see his kids in this whole film because we don't exist. No, no, you don't see his kids very much. And I'm, I think this is more about Shrek's as deconstruction of Shrek the character mm. as opposed to Shrek kind of always oh, can Shrek be a good father? No, no, no. It's more, it's and I, I like that. I don't like it's the story of, oh, can Shrek be a good father? Oh, Shrek's sick with family life. It's Shrek's sick with family life. But here are the consequences, and here's how Shrek learns from that. Uh, Shrek signs away a day of his life so he can get one day as an ogre where people are scared of him again. Yes. And it's like, boom. And Shrek's running around. But he falls, first off. He does fall. Lands on his keys. (laughs) Yeah. Shrek has keys, apparently. He does. I don't know what for. Maybe this is for the swamp door, you know. Does that have keys? I, I'm not even sure. He do, but he does say the famous line, "Get out of my swamp." He does actually. He does. When the witches arrive, he goes, "Get out of my swamp." <laughs> Which is, I was waiting for that one. You know, I was waiting for that one. Yeah, and it's just this weird thing of like Rumpelstiltskin takes away the day Shrek was born. Yes. And so, like, Shrek doesn't save Fiona, and Shrek never meets Donkey, even though literally every single character just happens to turn up in the same place anyway, even though it's not Yeah, yeah other. exactly. Well, I think Far Far... I don't know I don't know whether, like, Far Far Away or the land of the fairy tale land is, like, a... is a globe? Mm. Is it flat? I'm not sure, Because, but... like, literally, at the, Donkey's seen first, and he's driving a carriage. Continents? Yeah, like, Donkey's got the carriage of Shrek, mm. Puss and Boots is with Fiona, Yeah. Junji is... Well, he's just fighting over gingerbread horses. Yeah, that was. I thought that was cool. I thought that was a nice <laughs> gag. The fact that gingerbread man's turned into this like gladiator figure. Yeah. And fights with this broken lollipop. And <laughs> I thought that was cool. It was Pinocchio very, it was... is around and tries to become a real boy and doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And who was? I think no, the magic mirror's around as well. I think that's everyone. Yeah, yeah, he is. Oh, and dragon appears at the end as well. Because why not? Oh, yeah, Dragon does appear at the end, which is cool. Yeah, it's like, so ev- everyone's here, just no one knows each other. Yeah, yeah, everyone's in different... It's it's uh, it's very... I, I want to say it's a time travel story. It kind of is a time travel story. Or like an alternate alternate dimension where... Yeah. I Fiona mean, rescues herself and... Yes. You get that sort of change... The change in dynamics of characters that you previously knew, which is always good. It's this weird thing of like, and it's again, it's not what I was expecting at all. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, right. Obviously, Rumpelstiltskin is going to be this evil person. You can tell from the start. I was like, okay, yeah. 
And I was like, ah, oh, okay, this is going to be Shrek's just going to have to find Fiona. He's going to have to try and convince Donkey and everyone else what, mm. what he's on about is real. And then literally he finds Fiona straight away. Yeah. Um, with, with other ogres who just happen to be like below the ground or something. It's like, and well, the ogre ogres are hiding in this valley or, or whatnot. You've got John well, I, f- ogre. I thought, I see, I thought they were at first when Donkey gets swept, swept in the trap. I thought, okay, we're underground. But yeah, when yeah, the yeah. witches fly over trees and you can see them, so well, I was like, okay, but it's in the woods, I guess. They're hiding in, they're hiding in the lower section of the woods. <laughs> yeah. I thought they were underground too. So when the witch is flying over, I thought, what, they're not going to see you because you're underground? Yeah. Oh, wait, you're in some kind of valley? I, I don't know. And I was like, okay, fair enough. And Fiona's leading this charge to try and get far, far away back. Yeah. And Rump- and then um, Rumpelstiltskin is in charge of the whole Far, Far Away. He's the king of Far, Far Away he is, now. Because he he's got, got the massive- kingdom. He yeah, got the he's kingdom. Got his massive palace. He's got um, he's got all the witches around him. He <laughs> dances having a, having and, a DJ party. Uh, yeah, he's always having a party. All the witches are dancing in the club. He's wearing a big wig. He's he's quite fun. He's very fun to watch. He's he, a very fun to watch villain. He, he's an interesting villain when it comes to Shrek. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but um, and then he realizes that oh, the Shrek Shrek bust into the pa- Shrek bust into the palace. Yes. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you down, Rumpelstiltskin. You're, uh, you're gonna re- regret the day that you forced me to sign that paper. Mm. And Rumpelstiltskin's like, oh, I've got to take care of all these ogres because Rumpelstiltskin's trying to capture the ogres to try and capture Shrek. So he enlists the services of um, the best character in Shrek <laughs> and my favourite Shrek villain. Uh, it's, it's the Pied Piper. Yeah, you see. <sighs> So I, 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 I love the I I love the imagination and the creativity of turning the Pied Piper into this bounty hunter mercenary character whose whose special power is to force you to dance until until presumably you either die or you either get where you need to go. Also, a, a bit of trivia. Can I offer you a bit of a sprinkling of trivia? Corey? You can. You can. Um, the flute solos that are played by Pied Piper were performed by uh, a man called Jeremy Stieg. Who is the son of William Stieg, the author mm. of the original Shrek books? Oh, and Jeremy Stieg passed away in 2016, so uh, R.I.P. Fair enough. Um, Fair enough. He's actually a well-known jazz flutist and has multiple albums. Oh, very nice. So I'm glad they got him back for this. And it's also a little, uh, a little reference to his dad, William Stieg, who wrote the mm. wrote the original Shrek book. I mean, like overall. This film. I mean, also, this film wasn't. This film originally wasn't meant to be the final Shrek film. No. It it came out in 2010. There was originally supposed to be five, and the fifth mm-hmm. one was supposed to come out in 2013. However, apparently, when writing the script, they figured out actually this is going to be the last one and writing the script. Yeah. Um. Because this is it. We're going to end it off. Um. However, apparently, uh, Eddie Murphy said that Shrek Five is coming out and supposed to came out in 2020. Uh, yeah. But is now apparently coming out 2022. But it's like a like a remake. It's like a reboot of a series of the franchise. A Shrek reboot. Apparently, Shrek Five is now a Shrek reboot. I can't wait no, for that. Shrek doesn't need a blood. Shrek doesn't need a bloody reboot. What does Shrek need a reboot for? It's still everyone still knows who Shrek is. Everyone still knows the plot of Shrek. I can't remember who it was. Someone um someone wrote an original script that was kind of like a. There's like an idea for Shrek, and apparently that's what they're basing it off. I think someone had like an idea of if I was to redo Shrek, this is how I'd do it, and now we're kind of doing it that way. Right. Okay. Um. So this is, I think, this is how Shrek ends. <laughs> well, well, in 2014, mm. um, there was a Fox Business it network interview with the DreamWorks CEO, um, Jeff Katzenberg, uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg. Yeah. Who implied that more Shrek films would eventually be made. Yes. Um. He said that. Um. I think you can be confident we'll have another chapter in the Shrek series. We're not finished, and more importantly, neither is he. But following um, the, MB- the NBC Universal acquisition of DreamWorks, yes. uh, which happened in 2016, uh, the president and CEO, uh, Steve Burke, um, discussed plans to revive the franchise. So I know they originally planned for Shrek 4 to be the last one. Um, mm. But in July 2016, Hollywood Reporter cited sources they were planning a fifth film for a 2019 release. And by late yeah. 2016, early 2017, reports surfaced that the script had been completed. So, yes, uh, apparently. And a year later, a year later. Sorry to cut you off. A That's year fine. later, um, Puss in Boots came out. 
which yes. was sort of a spiritual successor and obviously follows the corrected timeline of Shrek 4 with uh, Puss in Boots as the main character, which we'd also said, said we'd review. Yeah, we did. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, Austin Powers screenwriter Michael McCullers had written a script based on his own original idea. Right. So essentially, I think he's written his own thing, and then mm. they've kind of gone, right, we'll take that, and we'll, you know, spruce it up, wax some Shrek in it, and go from there. Wax some Shrek in it. That's what I always say. So, so going along from um, the plot, we have uh, we have Shrek. He is trying to join this ogre resistance yes. against Rumpelstiltskin. Pied Piper gets involved. He uses his magical flute to corral the ogres towards the castle. And it's up to Shrek and Fiona to kind of put aside their differences, realise who they are, and get back there. Yeah, um, also, it, it, mm-hmm. to carry on with, uh, we've mentioned this in other Shrek films, about how if you look back at Shrek, it's somewhat... Like people like die, like Farquaad gets eaten by a dragon, and yes, uh, Gingy just gets eaten. He, I was going to say that Gingy <laughs> gets eaten by Puss in Boots. That was that's brutal. He just gets absolutely chomped by him, and yeah. I'm like, what? I was watching that. I go, okay, we're gonna we're gonna send him back to Farquaad, uh, not Farquaad. We're gonna send him back to Rumpelstiltskin. You know what? They're pretty similar, so I, w- yeah. I wouldn't be. They're both short men. They're both. <laughs> I was Short like, men who are all over kingdoms and have I was castles. Like, I was like, right, this is it. We're gonna Shrek's gonna go with Gingy, and Gingy's gonna be like, I captured him. Cool, but nope, he just gets eaten. Or Gingy's gonna like join the team. I thought Gingy yeah. was gonna like join the squad and be and have like a cool fight moment. No, he just gets eaten. Just gets eaten. There's a there's a, a YouTube video by um, I'm on it now. There's a YouTube video by a user called uh, Jack Matheson, hmm. uh, which is titled "All De- All Deaths in Shrek Unhappy Face." <laughs> And it's about it's about five minutes long, and it names and names and shows the death scenes of every character in Shrek. But who has who has the worst fate? People who get disintegrated, or Rumpelstiltskin, who's now in a cage, yeah, forcing to watch his his, his beloved pet be exploded, get blown up, yeah, and then forced to dance by the man who <laughs> formerly worked for him, yes, until he until he is dead probably. So, who knows? I well, think until that... until Shrek, you know, uses his eyeballs to drink with. Yeah, and Shrek uses his eyeballs to drink. They're human eyeballs. I can only assume. <laughs> I I tried googling it and I couldn't find out. <laughs> you couldn't find. <laughs> I tried researching this, and there's actually there's a, there's debates online whether ogres actually eat humans or not. Right. Okay. Do um, they? Well, it's people say they are, and that's why the humans are scared of them. But when people right. say, like, Shrek doesn't, but the other ogres might. And it's this weird debate of, or, like, Shrek used to, but he doesn't now. I don't know. Right, okay. But, but I'm like, I don't know who's, who else's eyeballs they could be. Uh, who like, other animals? Like animals' eyeballs. Yeah, maybe there's, like, other animals that just Shrek doesn't like. I don't know. But I'm like, going to say they're human eyeballs. Every animal can talk, though. And I'm going to say that, also, I like that in the, in the last episode, mm. every animal can talk. Yeah. Does that mean they're all people? Well, every animal can talk except for like the bugs and insects that Shrek gives people. Right. Okay. So we so make an argument for sentience for every animal apart from insects. Yeah. And bugs. I can't think of an insect or bug, but Shrek is like. Or, so good. Oh wait, no. I was going to say frogs, but then Shrek Shrek blows up those frogs into balloons. Yeah, he you know does. That frogs are sentient because frogs because the king turned into a frog. That could have been that, that could have been Fiona's dad for all he knew, and it could have been. <laughs> and he blowed him up into a balloon. Yep. And that's all Shrek's kind of thing. And then Shrek, frogs are obviously sentient because they can sing at least. Yeah. And he turns into a frog who can talk. And animals are sentient, and trees are sentient. Yeah, trees are sentient. So, the the world the world of Shrek is when you when you look a bit deeper, it's like that iceberg meme. Yeah. It might all look it might all look like nice and <laughs> nice and pleasant on the front with all your fairy tale characters, but behind it's it's de- it's dark and it's 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 brutal and it's demented. Maybe the reboot will clear up some questions for us. No, maybe. I don't know. It's possible. Whoever trusts a reboot with something though. Well no right, okay. Here okay, here's my here's my thought about that. Okay. People only reboot something. Yes. If something either gone wrong, mm-hmm. 
or there was nowhere else to go with it. Yes. Right. One of the best things is X Men. Right. Okay. X Men Three. X Men Three: The Last Stand yeah. is horrendous. Mm-hmm. It's one of the worst comic book films ever made. Right. Yes. Um, that's not unlocking anyone who was in it. They all did very well, and the, the cast they've got a great cast, X Men. But I don't think who directed that Brett Ratner. I think so. Um, just did a. It's, a, it's just an awful film. It's just really, really bad. Um, and they re- they rebooted it with X Men First Class and made it much better. Improved it. Yeah. Because they made it better because the last one was 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 horrible. So that was that was a legitimate argument for rebooting it. Shrek. Has been to everywhere and needs to go. Yeah. Could could I see a Shrek five that carries on from Shrek four? Definitely. Yes, I could. Uh, but could I see a, could I see not another Shrek film ever again? Yes, I could. I could live the rest of my life in perfect bliss without seeing a single Shrek film ever again. I presume you know there isn't much hype to go see Shrek be a father and raise his kids. Um, not really. Shrek and five. No, no one, no one wants. Uh, the kids spin off movies. I can't remember the names. I can't. Was one um, called Haggis? One was like uh, Felicia. One was called Felicia, and that was the plot point. Yeah. I can't remember the other two. It was, oh, Fergus, I think, was one. Oh, that was probably the one I thought was Haggis. I think Fergus, Felicia, and another one began with F, and I don't know what his name is. I don't know. Fred. <laughs> I reckon, uh, right, what's happened is they've gone right. Shrek's big. Like, meme wise, Shrek's big. Shrek's big. They, I, thought, I, just, I just thought he was just talking about his size. In general. Second. I thought he was referencing the fact that Shrek is tall and quite large. <laughs> Shrek's big. Correct. Correct, he is. If they pick their time where, like, no animated movie is, like, coming out, or, like, not a big one. So, you know how, like, sometimes Disney and Pixar release one is, like, not a not a main franchise. So, it's not, mm-hmm. not, like a, not like a Toy Story or, like, a Frozen or something. Yeah. But if they pick a year when, like... Not a not like a major animated film's coming out. I'm telling you, Shrek Five will win like the Oscars. Bring yeah, bring Shrek back, guys. Should we start? Should we front the? Everyone's doing like a campaign now, right? Mm. Everyone's doing 2021. Everyone's coming out with the campaigns. Should we do the real show campaign of making Shrek Five a reality? It's gonna win the Oscars. I'm telling you. When when, when we do the Oscars for whatever year that comes out in, my, all my votes are going to Shrek. Shrek Five, it, whether it's in the Oscars or not, bring it in for Shrek Five. Bring it home for Shrek Five, Corey. Eurovision, Shrek. No, <laughs> the World Cup, Shrek. <laughs> Shrek's gonna do it. It's coming home. Shrek's bringing it home. <laughs> He's Scottish. I don't know. Does it count? Um, yeah. So, but Mike Myers is English, so I guess it does count. Olympics, Shrek. Uh, yeah, Shrek. Shrek on the bobsled. <laughs> Shrek just is the bobsled. Why is that the event that came to your head? <laughs> I was thinking of Cool Runnings. Food of heaven, food of iron, getting up his ogre time. But with uh, everything on the real show, yes. After uh, our very eloquent and very educated review of the film, <laughs> yes. Um, we like to bring you a weekly wreck, do we not? Murray, again, it's happened last time. We need to rate the film. Oh damn! <laughs> right, okay. Well, this will be pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah, I mean, I right, I I gave Shrek one a seven. Yeah. I uh, I gave Shrek. Three is six point five. I can't mm. remember actually. I reckon this is either on par or maybe better than the first one. I think he's on par with the first one. What happened? What happened to that bar? You know that bar where all the all the villains went. I think that's is that. In, I swear that's in Shrek Four. I don't think it is. No, I've got a feeling. I only watched this yesterday. This is a, this is a weird thing. I can remember like nothing from it. Yeah, I've got a feeling one of the stepsisters is in it. Yeah, one of the the one the one that Larry King and Jonathan Ross voices is in this. Yeah, but I think that's it. And I think they're only at the start as well. I don't think they're in the actual alternate dimension portion yeah. of the film. I think they're only in the start bit. I would have liked to see Shrek go to that tavern. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Because they could have done it. Where now all the all the heroes are in that tavern because yeah, all the villains all, all the, the villains are in far far away. <laughs> you walk in and like Merlin's just a drunk wizard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if I if I'm going by the logic of it's the same as the first one, but I'm I'll I'll give it a seven. That's what I gave the first one. Okay. okay. I believe you gave the first one a seven point five. Seven point five. I I don't know. I'm gonna get. I was gonna get something better. Oh. Shrek two is still the Shrek two is still the best. Shrek two is the best one. Of course, cool. Shrek two is still yes. the best. But this goes. I'm gonna give it a seven point seven five. Oh, okay. So just just better than the first one. 
just better than the first one. I think it. I think it just pulls it home just better than the first one. And I think it's. I think it's a good place to uh, to bring in our weekly rec, which yes, is the your weekly turn. Rec and is and is my weekly rec. So would you like to know what that weekly rec is, Corey? Uh, I, I I would. And is it connected to Shrek? It is definitely connected to Shrek. Um, I know it's not December yet. <laughs> okay. And we might actually review this. But it is Shrek the Halls. Oh, God, I forgot what it existed. <laughs> yeah, the Christmas Shrek special 2007. <laughs> Shrek the Halls. It's one of my f- fondest Christmas memories of 2007. Watching this, is this when it gonna... aired... Is this and... going to be like our, um, our like Star Wars Christmas special, where it's just oh. like we're going to watch this like weird thing at Christmas? I think it came. I think it came with either the DVD for Shrek Two or Shrek Three. It's like an as like a bonus feature, right? Oh, fair enough. And I watched this at Christmas on Christmas Eve, and I can remember the, the 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 it was the funniest joke in the world. They were like enchanting Christmas food with like magic, and they chanted the turkey, and the turkey started dancing. On nice. the table, and it it killed me as a child because I thought that was the funniest joke ever in the world. Well, if I can quote a Google review of Shrek the Horse, I can't see why not. Um, by a man called John P from two years ago, this movie restored my faith in humanity. I have no doubt that this is the second coming of Christ reincarnated. He goes on to say, for hardcore Catholics like myself, it is clear that this is a gift from God Himself. And okay. I agree, I agree, Jean P. I agree. <laughs> Great. Well, everyone, so, look forward to that in like four or five months. Yes. <laughs> also, to quote another Google review from Jim Bob the Mighty uh, from two years ago, this movie brought me to tears. I cried the entire time. It's more action packed than Mission Impossible and more romance than Fifty Shades of Grey. Wow. It's more comedy than Airplane. It is the best movie ever in all caps. Uh, I mean, I hope it isn't more romance than Fifty Shades. I don't quite want to see that. <laughs> he said he can't, he can't, he can't express enough how much he loves it. And that okay. is can't spelled with an O. All right. <laughs> so sure. thank you, Jim Bob the Mighty. Thank you, John P, for those rave reviews of... Shrek the Hall was from 2007. What am I going to give it? I might give it a 7. I mean, you've given it more than IMD. IMDb has it. Yeah, 6.4, which is probably yeah. accurate. But everybody comes back. Mike Myers is back. Eddie Murphy's back. All the voices are back. Um, it's got Gingerbread Man and Pinocchio and... We'll watch it. We'll watch it come Christmas. Cast our minds back to this, dear listeners, when it comes Christmas time. We shall watch Shrek the Halls. It'll be our Christmas review. Great. Can't wait. Yeah, neither can I. So, enjoy that. Uh, It's a goodbye from me, goodbye, and a goodbye from Corey. Goodbye.